Hello students, welcome back to studies. In this video, we will be discussing the topics relating to Indian Contract Act of 1872. The topics that we are going to discuss is definition of contract, classification of contracts in English law, and essential elements of a valid contract. Let us look into the definitions. So as per section 2 subsection H of Indian Contract Act, Contract is an agreement which is enforceable by law. So as per this definition, if you are looking into contract, it is an agreement which is enforceable by law. So what is an agreement? Every promise and every set of promises, so either an individual promise or a group of promises, Forming consideration for each other will turn out to be an agreement. As per section 2, subsection B defines promise. So what is a promise? When the person to whom the proposal is made. Now proposal is nothing but an offer. So when the person to whom an offer is made signifies. Signifies means he mentions, he uh, puts out his intention. His assent thereto. Assent is nothing but acceptance. Okay. So, when the person to whom the offer is made mentions his acceptance for that, there to means for that offer, the offer, the proposal is said to be accepted. So, when a proposal is accepted, it becomes a promise. So, what is a promise? When the person to whom the proposal is made signifies his acceptance for that proposal, we say that the proposal has been accepted. So, as soon as the proposal is accepted, it becomes a promise. Now, what is an agreement? All such promises and every set of promises forming consideration for each other. For example, let us say A offers to sell 100 bags of rice to B. Okay, so A is offering to sell 100 bags of rice to B. For rupees 10,000. Now, in this case, the person to whom the proposal is made, so the person over here is B, to whom the proposal is made. So, A is making a proposal to B, and B is accepting this proposal of purchasing 100 bags of rice for rupees 10,000. Then there is a proposal which is accepted, and this becomes a promise, a promise from A to B. Now, every promise and every set of promises forming consideration for each other. So, what's the consideration A gets? The consideration that A gets is that he will get rupees 10,000. What is the consideration that B gets? He gets uh, the 100 bags of rice. Okay. As such, every promise and every set of promises forming consideration for each other will form an agreement. Okay. So, when A agrees to... Uh, sell 100 bags of rice to B and B agrees to purchase 100 bags of rice uh, from A for rupees 10,000, then there is an agreement. Now, when, when this agreement becomes a contract, an agreement becomes a contract when it is enforceable by law. So, every agreement which is enforceable by law turns out to be a contract. Now, on the due date, if A fails to sell these 100 bags of rice to B, then B can go to the court of law. That means to say B can enforce this agreement in the court of law. As such, it becomes a contract. So contract, in short, is all those agreements which are enforceable by law. Now, agreement is a broader concept. Now, why agreement is a broader concept? Because there are agreements which are enforceable by law and there are agreements which are not enforceable by law. All those agreements which are not enforceable by law are called as social agreements. So, what are social agreements? Now, say suppose A invites B for his birthday bash. And for some reason, A cancels the birthday bash at the last minute. In such case, B cannot go to the court of law because this particular uh, agreement are under the purview of social agreements. 
So there are two types of agreements. So agreements can either be those agreements which are enforceable by law and there are other sets of agreements which are social agreements and social agreements are not enforceable by law. So an agreement which is enforceable by law only turns out to be a contract. Social agreements will not be a contract. Now, there is one more thing that has to be kept in mind. The essence of an agreement is consensus ad idem. Now, what do you mean by consensus ad idem? Consensus ad idem is nothing but meeting of minds. Let us take, for example, A has got two cars. Okay, so one of the car is black in color and the second car is white in color. And he agrees to sell to B black car and B knows that he is purchasing the black car. In that case, there is consensus at Adam. There is meeting of minds. But if A is intending to sell black car, but B thinks that he is purchasing white car, then there is no consensus at Adam. There is no meeting of minds. So whatever the consideration is, both A and B should be having the same notion of that consideration. Okay, now only when there is, when both A and B are talking about the contract in the same sense and at the same time, then we say there is consensus at it. Let us look into the classification of contracts in English law. English law classifies uh, contracts into formal contracts and simple contracts. So what are formal contracts? These are those, whose, those contracts whose validity or legal force is based upon their form and they are valid even without consideration. So even if there is no consideration, only one of the party gains and the other party is not gaining, still such contracts are called are valid and uh, they are called as formal contracts. Okay. There are two types of formal contracts. One is contracts under seal and the other one is contracts of record. Contracts under seal is one which derives its binding force from its form alone, how it is formed. It is. It has to be in writing and it has to be signed, it has to be sealed and it has to be delivered by the parties. Okay. So, contracts under seal are the characteristic features of these contracts are they have to be in writing, they have to be signed, they have to be sealed and it has to be delivered to the concerned party. Now, such type of contracts, it's not just called as contracts under seal, they are also called, uh, called as a deed or a specialty contract. So, the following contracts should be under seal. Uh, if not, they are not uh, valid in the eyes of law. So, the contracts are contracts without consideration, lease of land for a period of more than three years, contracts by any of the corporations and contracts with British shipping. All these contracts will fall under the category of contracts under seal. And if they are not sealed, they will not be valid in the eyes of law. The second type of formal contracts are contracts of record. Now, these are not contracts in the real sense because there is no consensus at Adam. Now, why there is no consensus and a consensus at Adam? It is because these are, uh, you know, uh, these are con uh, these are uh, those type of contracts which are coming as an obligation rather than uh, willfully doing it. Okay, so they are only obligations which are imposed by, you know, either the government or the court. Okay, either to do something or to refrain from doing. Contracts can either be for doing a particular act or not doing a particular act. In case if the party is not willing to do it on his own, but he is obliged to do it because of you know, the law, because of uh, the impose, imposing by the court of law, in such cases you call it as contracts of record. So contract of record is either a judgment of a court or recognizance. So an ab obligation imposed by the judgment of a court and entered upon its records is called a contract of record. Then what is a recognizance? We were talking about recognizance here. So it is a written acknowledgement to the crown. Now we are talking about, uh, you know, English law. So in England, we have the crown system. You know, we talk in terms of the king and the queen. So uh, it is a written acknowledgement to the crown by any criminal. Okay. So, uh, and what does he say? He agrees to appear to the in the court of law by default or he will agree to keep peace, or he agrees to practice good conduct, or he is bound to, if not, he is bound to pay to the crown a certain sum of money. Now, this is also an obligation which is imposed upon him by the court, uh, whether he likes to do it or not. Okay, such type of contracts are called as contracts of record. Again, in short, these are the obligations which are imposed by the court upon a party, and the other, and the party does not have any other choice but to 
go ahead with the obligations that are imposed on him by the court. Now, the second type of contracts uh, are called as simple contracts. So, first one was formal contracts. Under, then we, um, under that, we saw contracts under seal and contracts of record. The second type of classification is simple contracts. All contracts which do not fall under the formal contracts will be called as simple contracts or they are called as Peru contracts. So, they may be made orally or in writing or it might be implied by the conduct of the parties. Uh, please remember, uh, the contracts can either be an express contract Express contract can either be your expressing, right? So it can either be in writing or it can be oral. And then there is something called as uh, implied contracts. So what are implied? It is in what are implied contracts? These are the contracts which are implied by the way in which the parties behave. They may not express it in writing or orally. Such type of contracts are implied by the conduct or behavior of the parties. Okay, so all those contracts which do not form, uh, fall under formal contracts are called as simple contracts. That's all for now students. See you all in our next video. Have a pleasant learning experience. Thank you.